What's up, guys? Ice Man here. Welcome to the Diablo 2 Research Institution. I am your host, Professor Ice Stick. What do you think about the mic? Mike, Mike, Mike. Yep, yep. What do you think about the new mic? Yep. Uh, it's hooked up differently. It's an AT2020 versus my old Yeti. So I'm curious what you guys think about the audio. But, uh, <coughs> blessings to you guys. Blessings to my patrons. Blessings to my channel members. Blessings to T-Von, a longtime channel member. He uh, hooked me up with this character, and I'm going to showcase it for you. Once again, only this time I want to try the cows with it. And some of you helped out a bit in the comments saying how I need to test out Exploding Arrow a bit more. So I'm going to do that. Uh, as far as I see it, the damage sucks. Like, big time. In PD2, they helped beef up the Firebow Amazon to quite an extent. Uh, where they're actually somewhat viable. <clears throat> but I just think this damage is very poor, especially considering the gear that I have. And the skill level that it's at is at level 36. I have a ton of Fire Pierce. Ran the Chaos Sanctuary. Have the Sunder Charm. But nonetheless, I want to test this out a bit more in the cow level. Because I feel like it's going to have some potential in the cow level. Granted, it's not going to be as fast as, say, a Javazan or any Sorceress for that matter. But uh, it might be somewhat viable. So thank you, T-Bon. Uh, he was a longtime channel member. Blessings to you, man. May you have many wives. And check out my World of Warcraft channel if you guys will. Spiritual Journeys with the Iceman. Uh, I might post some Elder Scrolls 6 whenever the hell that comes out. Basically, I want to play a couple other games in the future. Not too many, but just a few. And I don't want to post them on this channel, so I'm going to post it on that channel. Spiritual Journeys with the Iceman. Link to the description below. Uh, what I want to play is... Resident Evil 4, the remake, whenever that comes out. I also want to get Elder Scrolls 6 and... Diablo 4 is going to be being played on this channel. And World of Warcraft. I guess that's pretty much it. But I don't know. Maybe something else will come out. But yeah, what do you think about the mic? Hello? Uh, it's a uh, XLR with a better DAC now, an interface. And it used to be the Blue Yeti that was the USB version. So, But anyway, here's the gear. Hand of Justice once again. Level 16 Holy Fire Aura. Run equipped. Uh, damage sucks, but that's fine. 33 IS, 330 enhanced damage, ignore target's defense, 7 life stolen per hit, negative 20% to enemy fire res, 20% deadly strike. And I might compare this to, say, Phoenix. Uh, I'm thinking, overall, this thing might be better. I don't know. F Phoenix does have a negative 28% to enemy fire res. It also has the redemption, uh, redemption aura. But... Hell, maybe it'd be a close call. This has the IS, which I don't believe Phoenix has any IS. Flickering Flame, for obvious reasons. The three to fire skills is pretty damn godly. And negative 10% to enemy fire res. And then this godly armor. Uh, it's got to be the most expensive piece on this character. Jeweler's Dusk Shroud of Stability. 24 fast rate recovery. Some fire damage. And negative 20 to enemy fire res. And plus 20 to fire skill damage. Also have a High Lord's Wrath. Uh, maybe a Maros would be okay. What is my IS at? Um, so the increased attack speed is at 73. I gotta look up the breakpoints. I might be missing a, a, a key breakpoint right there. I'm not sure. Plus 20 to fire skill damage and negative 50 to enemy fire res. And I also have a Merc with freaking infinity. All right. So I have War Traps, have Raven Frost. Razor Tail, so I do have 100% Pierce. Mantled Heal, all this other crap. I mean, let's see how well this character fares in the cow level. And I can teleport. I have Nagas on Switch. Okay, here's some cows. Oh my god! It sucks! Yeah, unfortunately, it still kind of sucks. Uh, as anticipated. I hate to say it, man. As anticipated, it still kind of sucks. Um, it can do it. Right? It can do it. But you see all the currency in this character? Well, maybe what would be cool is to have 
I mean, hell, even one point into Freezing Arrow. Oh my god, I do have some skills left. Hell yeah. Look at how much it sucks. Uh, and the and the damage per second is horrible. Look at the look at the damage per second. You see that? It did like one twentieth of the cow's life on players one difficulty. Uh, so I hate to say it, but immolation arrow is pretty much useless. Uh, yeah, it does have a greater fire explosion damage than exploding arrow does, but the problem is it has a cooldown, so it's very tedious to use. Uh, what's probably the best method is to just spam Exploding Arrow in every, like, second or so. Cast an Immo Arrow, but that's just... It's kind of a bitch. But it will give you a bit of a, an uptick in that one arrow damage, the Exploding. Like I said, the, the damage per second is just useless. Um, 652 damage per second. And it lasts for four seconds. It's quite useless, alright? Against a boss... It'll help a little bit, but it's just damn useless. Yeah, Ice Boy's already an expert at this build. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll test it out with Phoenix. Oh my god! We got a unique item! And some claws! And a freaking Elder Staff. If only we had a Loot Builder and we could see if it's like ethereal or is it just socketed and how many sockets does it have and what skills does it have on it, but no. Uh, no loot filter. I can. can we even drop the damn items with a hotkey? Nope. Can't even drop them out of the stash. You gotta, you gotta drag them out and drop them. Uh, but apparently they know what we need better than we do. Even though every single one of us been asking for a loot filter and some stackables and a an, uh, currency tab in the stash, but no, let's just give them some charms that break the game and that destroy the economy. Maybe. Maybe they don't. Do you think that the Sunder Charms destroy the economy? Let me know in the comments below. As expected, I'm quite sure these are very common. And, um, but more than just the economy. You know, to hell with the economy in this game, especially if you're going solo like I do, if you take the spiritual journey. Uh, to hell with that aspect, just for conversation purposes. What about the end game aspect? Does it make it too easy? I mean, on one hand, it's nice to be able to run fire characters for once, you know? Uh, like in this example, even though it still sucks. But on the other hand, where really is the challenge then in this game? But nonetheless, this thing has a bunch of GCs, an Annie, a Perfect Torch, all these nice little things. Uh, these nice things right here with knockback. Let's try it again. And yeah, let me show you the damage. Well, for one... Exploding arrow damage, 2,800. Immolation arrow, about 4,000. Maybe this isn't the best bow for the job. Uh, and here's the fire aura tick. Oh my god, it barely does anything. Does it do anything? The holy fire? Here. Barely does anything. But uh, that's fine. I mean, it's it's style points. You can't expect that to do much. But I mean, when I have 50 fire pierce coupled with infinity, uh, maybe I'd want a little bit more out of it. But what do you guys think? Yep. Do it again. Let's get it. 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 Ah, uh, there's melody. That's another bow you could try out. Does it have like up to six to bow and crossbow skills on it or something? Breaking melody, uh, more budget, but you're gonna miss out on that nice 20 fire pierce. Oh, this armor is just ridiculous. Who the hell would uh, who the hell would make that honestly? But let's try something else. Dragon. Not gonna try portrait. Let's try dragon. This has uh, an even greater. Well, it has 14 Holy Fire, so I believe that they stack. Uh, just some cool style point mods. 12% cast level, 15 Hydra on striking. I mean, it pretty much sucks. But you get style points for using it. So that counts for a lot. Come on, cast a Hydra. Cast a Hydra, then we can watch it do zero damage. There's one. Look at that. Look at the Hydra. 
See the damage it does? <laughs> Holy shit. The Hydra! Are you kidding me? I gotta bust my ass for a low rune and shit? And a sur rune? I gotta bust my ass for a sur and a low rune and I get a freaking Hydra that does like zero damage? Oh my god. Look at the holy fire damage. He does about one one thousandth of their health per second. Get that Hydra. There's one. Get him. Get him. Get him. Oh my god. I mean, it's cool. It's style points, man. If, say, you wanna, like, run normal or something, uh, maybe you could kill shit in normal. Maybe it would be able to kill Fallen's in the Den of Evil or something. But what do you guys think about this build? Here, I'm gonna mix it up. I've I'm gonna mix this shit up. Yeah, there we go. I mean, ammo arrow's just complete ass. Look at this, 100% pierce the phrasing, it's just, just style points. They freeze for like a split second. Freezes for two seconds, okay. Oh, it's always two seconds. And the radius is the same. So for freezing purposes, uh, level one is level 20. That's kind of cool. Uh, it's, it's a bit defensive. Uh, to my understanding, you can have multiple Sunder charms on your character at once. So you can have a Cold Sunder and a Fire Sunder. The nice thing is, with the Fire characters, is that Flickering Flame is arguably, in some cases, not even arguably. It's just definitive. The best in slot item. Like we're talking about a Fire Droid, for example. Get a godly statted pelt and make yourself a flickering flame and try to make the case that something else is better than that uh, point being with how sunder it pierces your fire res by 75 in this case at least you get that nice aura resist fire see that so that gives me oh my god it gives me a ton I go from negative 65 all the way up to 41 holy shit it gives you a ton of fire res. I mean, really, that's something that works in the favor of the fire characters. Uh, with how much they have working against them. At least, Flickering Flame has a nice fire res aura. And it does affect your minions as well. Doesn't it? Doesn't it affect your minions? Let's find out. My impression was it did. Did I identify those boots? Oh yeah, okay, they sucked. Uh, belts are probably worth identifying as well. Get some GG strength, FHR, and all that other crap. Res. Uh, just for, for some builds, that might be the way to go, bruh. Alright. Yeah, this is a noob. This is noob. Oh! Why is he still maxed out? Shit, I can't even... Oh, it's... Alright, so it does affect your minions. Yep, it affects your minions, Fire Res. That's the purpose of it, Ice Boy. A paladin, they gotta have them support, shit. Gotta be a supporter class. But how's the ladder going for you guys? Have you been playing the ladder? Have you found a little charm yet? How abundant are they? Uh, outside of the glitch, where apparently the hork barb, every time he horks a GC, like uh, it's a freaking sunder charm. There's some glitch going on right now. Maybe that was intentional. What do you bet that shit was intentional? And hold up. Before you make your decision. My impression was the reasoning behind these charms is that they're trying to increase build diversity. Because that's what they said. And it only makes sense. There's a bunch of characters you just can't use in this game. If you want to be in any way close to anywhere near optimal. 
So they say they want to do it for build diversity so that we can be excited. My 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 thought was, wow, I can finally make like a fire sorceress and just start out as a fire sorceress and go through the whole game. But hold up, you gotta get the charm first, and the charm you can't get till hell in the terror zones. So first I gotta run the general cookie cutter run of the mill character slash build, like a hammer and a cold arc, get to the end game, then get the charm, and then give it to a noob character. And then I can have some build diversity, you know? So... They kind of tried to do two things at once with it. It's like, it's like combative ideologies. Because... While they want it to be kind of hard to get and supposedly be rare or something, or people were like, Oh, these are gonna be worse, like more than infinity, but I knew that was complete bullshit. Because I knew they were going to make these things abundant. Just like how Geeds is pretty abundant, Geeds is pretty common. I knew this shit was going to be abundant. Because in addition, they wanted to increase build diversity, and they know people don't want to bust their ass for endless hours just to get the Sunder Charm, just to go back and finally try something new in Diablo 2. Being like a fire sorceress, or a fire druid, or whatever. Uh, that are just more viable than what they used to be, and potentially even run the game from normal as that, because these things don't even have a level... They do have a level requirement, level 75. Ugh. I wonder if they need to take that away. That's odd, but okay, so they do. It, it just seems like there's, uh, there's maybe some combative ideologies behind these charms. Because I, I don't think they really want you to try that hard to get them. You know, because they want you to have them so you can experience the new content. You can finally run the game with a different character. But they also want you to work a little bit for them, but not too hard. Because if you have to work too hard, just not as nearly as many are going to get them. The, the general player is just going to quit before they ever get them. And then they're not going to be able to experience this new content. So there's like competitive shit going on here, man. I wonder if they intentionally made that glitch. Where the guy just horks them up. They're like, hey, let's... They're like, we fucked up. They're like, we had two ideologies going against each other here, and uh, it just doesn't make much sense with what we did with these charms. So let's make a glitch where the barb can just hork a bunch of them, and then the economy just gets saturated the hell out of with these things so all the noobs can get it. How would they miss that, you know? That was probably on purpose. Well, that's fine. Just saying, it was probably on purpose. What do you guys think? I'm not talking shit about it. Like I said, if they're gonna do it, they might as well let you find the damn thing in normal. Like in Path of Diablo, for example, uh, they had the charms that would modify your skills, right? Like you'd have magic arrow, you put the charm on, and all of a sudden you'd be shooting like three magic arrows out at once, okay? Uh, in which case, it helped change up your build a little bit and what you're going for as a build. So they gave you them in normal. You'd fight Nithalak and he'd, he'd potentially drop these charms. So people would go to normal Nithalak and kill him. And then you could run the rest of the game, the rest of the spiritual journey, uh, with this new build you're going for, you know? So I thought that was kind of part of their half ideology with these, only they were divided, man. They were kingdom divided, dog. So they are like, uh, I don't know. I mean, let's give it a level 75 requirement anyway. Just because. We don't really want to think this through too much. So they gave it a level 75 requirement. But. If they're going to do it, my thoughts were they should let us find these, this shit in normal. Because then you could actually run the game. The spiritual journey. Take the spiritual journey with a different build for once. You know? Because this really didn't solve that issue. It didn't solve the issue of running the game with a different build for once. It just makes us run the same shit. To get to the end as quick as possible, as quickly as possible, to attain the charm, to then maybe either respec or make a new character that you always wanted on the game with. That just didn't make sense at the time uh, because of all these immunities. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this, Zahn, and uh, more videos to come. Peace be with you.